Welcome to The Holistic Show. In today's episode, Eric and I are going to be talking about posture exercises, desk ergonomics, standing versus sitting, physical therapists, and you'll also learn how I try to swim in my office. If any of these topics you want to dive into straight away, just check out the show notes and we've listed some times there so you can skip ahead to the parts that interest you. Welcome to another episode of The Holistic Show. Today we're talking about how to keep fit and healthy while working from home. Hi, Eric. How are you doing today? Doing great. Let's do this. Yeah. You feeling uh, fit and healthy? I'm definitely feeling fit and healthy sitting on my butt. <laughs> great. Well, at least I'm standing, although we'll talk later, but that doesn't make too huge of a difference, I think, as a lot of people tend to believe. I know it's something that you and I have discussed uh, uh, privately, but yeah, what's working for you right now in terms of uh, keeping fit and healthy at home? Uh, on top of sitting on my butt for the whole day. <laughs> yeah, that's the most important thing. So there you go. We can just wrap it up now. It's just basically sitting on your butt and exactly. you're good to go. Just get some Perfect. potato chips and turn on uh, Netflix while you're at it. Yes, and uh, drink a lot of, uh, of Coke, <laughs> <Yeah>. of course, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Um, well, so what's working for me right now? Um, uh, Plenty of things. I, th I think we need to um, we need maybe to to divide this into into different parts. Um, I think, and this is something we talked about uh, uh, morning routines uh, in one of the past episodes. Um, I think what's important to me right now, knowing that I'm gonna be sitting for the best part of the day, because we will talk about the difference between having a stand up desk as you do and and being you know uh, and sitting like I do. Um, but uh, I, uh, I think what's important when you know you're going to sit for most of your day is to start the day with stretching. Um, and, uh, and this, to me, has, make, uh, has made a big difference. And I think you're going to share some, some tips on that as well. Um, but to me, uh, part of my morning routine before I actually sit down at my desk is to do some light exercise, physical exercise, and some stretching. Um, so because uh, stretch, stretch your back, stretch your neck, um, and maybe we can put some link. I have some uh, YouTube videos that uh, can refer people to for some stretch, uh, stretching exercise. Um, Let's just dive into that. What do you think? I think there's a, there's a lot to discuss on this, but I mean, we can do it sequentially. So kind of the stretches that you're doing um, and you do this every day. And you, so you, and do you follow some YouTube videos or how do you, you do it based on if you know you're going to be at your computer all day or how do you make the decision? Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, obviously I watched some uh, YouTube videos uh, in the past and, and based on that. And I also went uh, a few times uh, in the last few years, went to see a, a chiropractor. Uh, who also uh, gave me some exercise because I had some, um, I am some, some disc hernia uh, in my lower back, and uh, and also recently I had some uh, some some neck neck pain, um, uh, so I, I had to get that fixed uh, as well, um, and uh, and so those people also give me some uh, some 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 stretching stretching exercise, um, but it, yeah, it's it's mostly five to ten minutes of of uh, of light stretches lying down on my back. It's extremely important um, because that's, um, that that puts you back into a neutral position, um, and um, and it's 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 mostly some some uh, leg raises, some leg stretches, a little bit of some yoga positions, um, but it's uh, it's mostly to make sure that that the back, especially after spending like the whole night uh, lying down, the back awakens naturally. Um, and um, and it's just yeah some light light five to ten minutes uh, stretches lying, lying on my back that does help, and I do that before I actually do the more physical exercise like uh, push ups, uh, squats, sit ups, and things like that just to get to get your body warmed up so to speak. So it's it's a it's a body warm up that's what it is, uh, and it's mostly back stretches. And do you do the, the push-ups and the sit-ups and these kinds of things? Do you do those all in the same session or are those at a later time in the day? Or how do yeah, you usually I try to do that right after the stretches and it's right, uh, right after that I, I do the physical exercise. So um, something I think you and I uh, talked, uh, but not on this podcast, about uh, my new um, training <laughs> regimen of doing those uh, uh, push-ups and squats. Um, yes. Yeah, so I, I don't have a gym membership anymore because I moved out and there is no gym close. And I know that, and this probably is true for a lot of people, if you don't have a, a gym that is five minutes walk uh, from your apartment, you're probably never going to go there. Um, and, um, and that's definitely my case. Uh, so right now what I'm doing, what I changed about that, 
um, to minimize uh, the, the amount of real power I need and also to get the, 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 the anchor, the habit anchored uh, into my daily routine is that I started in January, the first week of January, with every morning doing one push-up, one sit-up and one squat. And that sounds ridiculous because people are saying like, Eric, how are you going to be into shape if you're doing one sit-up and one, you know, one push-up per day? And I don't want to start to be in shape now. I'm, I'm, I'm playing the long game here. So I'm trying to really um, anchor the habits by doing something as simple as possible um, on, on a daily basis. So it's, uh, it starts with the first week, one, one sit-up, one push-up, one squat. Week two, two push-ups, two sit-ups. Week three, three push-ups with sit-ups, and so on and so forth. Um, and right now, I'm, I'm at week 15, and now I'm doing every morning 15 push-ups, 15 squats, 15 sit-ups. And now it starts to be, you know, the beginning of a proper workout, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm three months in. Um, and, but imagine at the end of the year, it will be 50 uh, push-ups, 50 sit-ups, and that's, that's some serious uh, normal workout. And that's, that's what I'm, I want. I want to, in one year time, having uh, a proper workout every morning but uh, but by just ease myself into it, for me it will be it will be easy to do because my body would adapt. It becomes a uh, part of my routine, and uh, now I'm three months in and I don't even think about it. Right? I just do my stretches, I do my exercise, get my coffee, and get my uh, my day uh, starting. So that's to me for people who have um, a trouble to to stick with a proper uh, physical routine. I think uh, I think they can try that uh, because it's it's very easy to start uh, with one push up, one sit up every day for one week, and then two. Um, uh, same same advice I give people who want to journal or wants to meditate. Start with as low a barrier as you can. If you start meditating, maybe start with one minute. If you start journaling, maybe start with one sentence every day. So same with the physical stuff. Yeah, I like that a lot. And uh, I was joking to you privately that, you know, after 10 years of this, you're going to be doing uh, whatever, 500 plus. <laughs> you basically spend all day doing your push-ups and sit-ups. But no, jokes aside, I think at a certain point, you'd probably cap it off at 50 or whatever made sense. Um, I think the other thing is you obviously have a lot of flexibility in your um, in your schedule. So it doesn't really impact when you get up if you need to you know, if you start your work day a half an hour plus or minus doesn't really matter um, on, on most days, but maybe for people that uh, obviously we're talking about working from home, but I think this applies really everywhere. But if you're getting up early and you have to be at an office at a specific time or you have some commitment, then it'll also give you the option to adjust your, your sleeping schedule a little bit if you need to get up a little earlier to be able to do the 50 over the course of a year that you don't have to make any dramatic change any week. You just have to make some minor adjustments along the way to make sure you have enough time to do all that. Yeah, so on my end, I, I, uh, I have a, a you know similar routine, but a little bit different. Uh, it's very much focused on posture exercises um, I, I'll try to find some links online to the exercises that I do, but unfortunately I don't even know the names of them because they, uh, were taught to me by a local physical therapist here, um, in Prague that I saw, uh, over the course of about one year, two years ago. Um, and she was able to teach me a lot of different exercises, uh, and made sure that I did them correctly. And so I've really maintained doing those. Uh, those have gotten me maybe not all the way where I want to be in terms of posture, but I think they've gotten me about 70% of the way there, which is really, really great. So I'll, I'll try to find some resources to be able to share to give you some ideas around this. But they're, um, they're not really stretching based. They're actually um, uh, quite, uh, is it kinetic? I don't know if they're called kinetic exercises, but ones where you hold certain positions for certain periods of time. And there's also a fair bit of use of um, a TheraBand, which is basically just like a really big, thick rubber band, if you will, that you use as a, as a mechanism to provide resistance to your exercises. So uh, various shoulder exercises. I mean, a lot of the posture, I mean, you know, you kind of have your, your shoulders hunched. So it's really to enable you to hold your, 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 um, your shoulders back uh, in a, in a neutral, like down position and uh, to have, be able to hold your spine up and your, even and your back to have it you know, quote unquote straight, which is really more of a, a gentle curve. Um, but I think it's just, a, it's still something that I'm, I'm working on, but this is um, a really key piece. So I spend about, let's say 15 minutes in the morning, 15, 20 minutes doing these exercises. I also mix in, I have mixed in, in addition to what I've learned from the physical therapist I mentioned, some, some uh, push-ups, planks, squats. Um, I also use a um, 
this, the company Theraband makes, um, it's like just kind of like a rubber bar that you can bend in different ways and twist. So also um, for um, like carpal tunnel syndrome uh, prevention, I haven't even really researched that much, but I remember from seeing physical therapists uh, over a decade ago that they had some exercises, which is where I actually picked up that um, that um, rubber bar that I was talking about. So having different exercises like that, just to keep effectively to counteract sitting or standing at a computer all the time. And so this has really been um, what's worked well for me. And um, I write, a, I, I, I track it in a, on a sheet. So I have the different exercises that I do. And then I track um, the, the sometimes repetitions when they're relevant, sometimes a combination of rel- repetition plus intensity. So those rubber bands, the TheraBands that I was talking about, um, they come in different uh, resistance um, levels. So uh, I started at one and now I've actually added one that's a bit higher because it got a little bit easy, easy too easy. And one of the metrics that the, this particular physical therapist was keen on was when you're doing a various movement, a particular movement, then you shouldn't really, you know, you make sure you do it correctly and you shouldn't do it more than maybe one or two repetitions at a point where your muscles are trembling a little bit. And the idea there is that you're, you're like building the, you know, you're building your strength around it, but you're not causing too much damage and not in the sense of damage to your muscle. I don't, I'm not an expert on it, but you know, you, you, if you break the like little microfibers in your muscles, that's the key to muscle growth. But the goal here for sure is not muscle growth. The goal here is basically not having your back hurt and being able to be comfortable in, in your, your, uh, your your body basically in terms of standing or sitting or working in front of a computer um, and not causing damage to your ligaments. Cause I think this is, this was actually why I went to see her in the first place was I had shoulder pain that I thought was as a result of, um, of maybe being a bit too ambitious in the do it yourself yoga that we talked about on a, on an earlier show. Um, and it may have been related to that. It's hard to say, but I think a lot of it is actually being at a standing desk. I later learned because I often will just like put my elbow, I'm right-handed. So I'll put my left elbow down and I'll work with my mouse. And, and, and these are things that are completely subconscious. You know, I'm just paying attention to my work and, uh, and, and kind of holding these, these poor postures. So that's, that's my, um, that's what I did for quite a while. And more recently, especially with all the quarantine stuff going on, I've been experimenting with, additional um, posture exercises that I'm really just finding on YouTube and being very conservative with how I do them, making sure I maybe do them for a few days in a gentle version and then just really pay attention to have, is something hurting more or less to make sure I don't overdo it because this is something that I've done many too many times in my life where I really pushed too hard and caused, maybe I overstretched some ligament or who knows what happened. Um, and so just taking some time to do them over a longer period of time is what I've found uh, really, really useful. So I've, I've added those. I've also been doing a bit more um, cardio type exercises indoors now with the quarantine going on, which is something that I very much welcome. Both of these is to refine my posture exercises and also to add a bit of cardio that I can do at home. I'm very keen on not doing this um, as part of um, some sort of app or some video in the long term. If in the beginning I need to watch these things to learn it, that's fine. But I want to be able to do this completely free of any digital stuff uh, on a long-term basis. So that's those are some of the things that I've added on recently. And I do the my like more cardio type exercises, uh, maybe sometime before lunch usually, or after, after lunch or mid afternoon um, to get my body moving. I used to, for several months, I was doing swimming a f- fair bit. So that was my exercise of choice. I can't do that now, so. Swimming in your apartment? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I just turn on the the shower and just go nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it was uh, I obviously had a swimming pool, but that uh, that's not an option now in uh, in Prague where I am. So, um, so I needed some form of more you know higher heart rate exercise. And and what do you do now for for cardio in the apartment then? Yeah, it's just like uh, lunges. I had I had a, an app that I had used um, uh, when I was living in China. It was uh, you are your own gym. I don't know if that whole thing. It, basically, it's body weight exercises. So there would be some, you know, you're finding some furniture to do some pull ups on, and uh, it, the same kind of thing. Like I didn't want equipment either. Um, I, you know, I even thought about getting an elliptical machine or getting some uh, weights, and I'm, I'm like, I don't really want this stuff kicking around. Um, and I'd rather, I want to be able to do this anywhere. If I, 
end up I haven't been traveling much because I have a newborn now at home. But uh, normally my life includes a huge amount of traveling, and I want to be able to be in a hotel room or an Airbnb somewhere and be like, okay, now I'm gonna do my my exercises, and I don't need anything to to do it. Of course, these um, these uh, uh, thera- therabands that I was mentioning, you know, that is a piece of equipment, and sometimes I do travel with those, but maybe I'll take a, a lighter version of what I normally have and it'll be just a, you know, one roll that's kind of, you know, this big that I take with me um, to have that that option. But I think also if you have a it's like mix of different exercises, I mean, I probably have maybe 20 or so different exercises that I do. And so if I'm out, uh, out of my normal uh, area and I don't have all the things I need to do, all the exercises, if I can do, you know, three quarters of those or half of those, that's fine for a week or even a month, you know, and, and then I'll fit it in with some other stuff. Maybe I'll end up walking a lot more or I'll spend less time in front of a computer or conversely, I might spend more time in front of a computer in the wrong posture, maybe at a coffee, um, coffee shop or things of that nature. So I think it really leads to paying attention to how you feel, which is kind of another thing I want to talk about and something that I've been more, more attuned to recently. But yeah, do you have any thoughts on what I've said? Yeah, it's not about perfection. It's about cons- consistency. Um, a, you know, some, some, some people, for instance, uh, you, you're talking about, uh, having some, you know, material at home or anything to, to help you do any exercise. I think that's a problem for that. Some people might have is they're traveling. They are not exercising anymore because they don't have the tools that they're using, uh, or they don't have the gym that they are used to go. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, we are relying mostly on body weight exercise, um, or any type of exercise, to, to be honest, is, is, is good enough. It doesn't have to be is the same exact same routine that you're doing every day when it's not convenient to do it, uh, as long as you're moving uh, your body. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, it's also, basically just so you don't have like um, giving removing the excuses not to do it. Yeah, right. P- I pretty think much this is what exactly it is. removing all excuses. And uh, I agree, not being too dependent on any apps or programs uh, or things like that, which I, I, I think are great to get you started eventually. Like we mentioned with meditation, using medita- meditation apps, I think are great, especially at the beginning, to get to get you started on something. Um, but you should not be dependent. Uh, like every everything, you know, it's um, you should never be depending, dependent on anything um, to, be, to, to stay consistent. Um, so... What would you say um, are the benefits uh, of, of, of using a standing up desk for you? Because I'm not using a standing up desk. I mean, I've, when, I, when I came to your place, I, I was working using it, but I, I, it's just not for me. I also read a, a lot of um, studies have been done um, actually uh, finding out that uh, a standing up desk creates other problems. And, uh, and it's actually... Um, not much better uh, in the long term than, uh, than uh, a normal uh, uh, desk because the issue is is movement. And if you're standing up, you're also not moving. So it's a lack of movement and that can Depends create, on what kind uh, of music you're listening to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, so so, so what, what would you say uh, are the benefits for you? Why are you using a standing up desk? And what... Uh, advice would you give people who are using a standing up desk in terms of you know like not not being stuck at it either so yeah yeah i think uh, b- before i answer that I, I think the ultimate way to be comfortable in working at a computer it's not so much about standing desk not standing desk fancy chair not sta- fancy chair um it's really about uh, i think two things primarily is having movements or exercises that compensate for something that your body isn't designed to do, i.e. sit or stand for hours at a time. Um, and ideally, and this one is extremely difficult and one that I'm eager to continue to improve upon, which is being attuned to how you feel and what and how you're holding your body when you're sitting or standing. And that's very, very, very difficult. And I don't have any magic recipes or even things that have really... Um, worked well besides just trying to take breaks from time to time and during those breaks to say, oh, how do I feel? And maybe even do some little exercises throughout the day, which I've been doing more and more of, uh, especially in the last uh, two months, even um, row, like rowing exercises. I just have one of these, um, the, the TheraBand thing, and I just loop it around um, like a foot on a piece of heavy furniture so I can row against 
against that it's actually a stationary cabinet uh, that's bolted to the wall so it's not going anywhere um so that's i think that's the that's that's the thing that's always worked best for me but um even to give a bit of background too i i i first started experimenting with let's say ergonomics because i think the standing desk your question on that really fits into this ergonomics category um probably 15 years ago um and have done a lot of different things i mean i first started with getting a really fancy chair that had all these different adjustments on it. And then I had um, um, a keyboard tray with like the, so I could get the, you know, get everything perfectly lined up, get the monitor, you know, uh, two and a half centimeters, one inch of the top of the monitor, I eye height, you know, all these things, you know, I did all the research and I did that and it didn't make, it didn't make any notable difference really. And um, with a lot of experimentation with that, uh, it's still, I still haven't really found that that's the, the key thing. And, and with, so first it was like, okay, get this like ideal sitting setup, nice, everything, get monitor. I had monitor arms and at that time it was, you know, dual monitor and had monitor arms that I could adjust how I wanted to. And then the more recent one, which the standing desk I've had for about three years and it does move up and down. It's not a very fancy one. It's just from one from, from Ikea, uh, for about $200 or so, and um, and you can move it uh, manually with it has a little hand crank, um, which is fine. And I didn't want uh, uh, the mechanical ones. I mean, some of them are, the downside with this one is it's a little bit um, more wobbly than I would like it to be. It's not a stable, but for the price, it's, it's fine. Um, but uh, I've seen other ones that have electronic controls that are sometimes much, much more stable. And I didn't want the electronic controls because it's just one more thing to break. I felt like that would fail before the desk becomes useless. So I wanted something mechanical that I felt might be more reliable, but I think the standing desk has a lot of concept has a huge amount of hype around it. I've come to learn, you know, I kind of bought into that hype. I think when I first got it, although I have adhered to it, I, I'd probably spend in a given month, I'm probably spending 70, 80% of my time, probably closer to 80, maybe even a bit more uh, of my time, uh, standing when I'm at my, my computer. And I think the benefit for me is I feel like I'm at the very least using my legs muscles more to support myself. So I think there's uh, maybe a little bit of a benefit there. I don't think, as you said, though, I don't think the difference is that big because if you're not paying attention or you don't have the, the, the muscle strength to hold yourself up in the correct posture, then it doesn't really matter if you're sitting or standing. I definitely find myself if I'm sitting in a chair, I'm going to be slouching much more. And so my back probably does hurt less or is less uncomfortable because I stand because I'm still slouching to be completely clear here, but not nearly as much because in a chair, you can really kind of sink into that thing and kind of really get a good solid arch on your back, which is probably fine to do. I think it's having these, dip, if you if you did that and then you were like completely upright and then you had some other position and you were changing it every half an hour, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with holding a sort of a poor posture, but um, it's this holding the same posture for a long period of time and it's a sort of the wrong posture. So um, that's what I've, I don't think that there's a sort of a massive compelling reason to have a standing desk. I think the most compelling reason is the fact, at least for me, that I can switch it. Is that I can, when I'm a bit tired, like yesterday, I was uh, working a little later or pretty fatigued at the, towards the end of my workday. And I just lowered my desk and sat in my very inexpensive uh, chair. It's not a fancy chair at all. And, uh, and it did the trick. And so be, being able to have the, 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 modu the options to be able to modulate between the two of them, um, I do really like that a lot. In terms of like measurable, tangible benefits, hard to say. Yeah, no, I, 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 think, I think the most important point here is, is change. Yep. Change in positions, change in, in posture. So um, I think it's easier... Uh, mentally probably to 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 change your position more or to get more movement if you're already standing up then when you're in a chair you're so comfortable that you know you can forget about uh, getting up moving uh, for a longer period of time uh, i think if you're standing up you get tired more easily so you need to move your legs or to do to do some movement which i think probably helps um well but yeah, it, it, movement is important, um, and this is what made me consider at some point also to 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 buy um, a standing up desk that can, like yours, uh, manually, electronically, whatever, just uh, just change position. Um, but I, I just realized I, uh, I I would probably not use it uh, the best way um, that I could, so I, I kept my um, 
my normal desk and what I do now more and more because I, uh, as you know, I like to read a lot. And when I read uh, nonfiction books, I, I, I take a lot of notes. And so what I do right now is, and you can see uh, the books behind me, is I actually go there and, and pick a book because I, I might read different books at different times. Um, and uh, and I, I stand up there reading the books and taking notes standing up. Um, and this uh, this is something new that I've been doing for a few months now. And uh, and this is to me is, uh, is my transition period. So if I'm, and it does two things. It does get me uh, away from the computer um, and, uh, and then it gets me, uh, to, 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 to stand up. And I think that that's been very helpful. So if I, if I, yeah, if I spend a couple of hours uh, on my computer, sitting up, maybe with some breaks here and there, um, then, uh, my eyes become a bit tired. I say like, okay, now I need to, you know, to do something else. And, um, I finish some of the tasks that I needed to be done. I get up, you know, I pick up a book and, um, and start to take notes standing up for like 30 minutes or so. And that's, uh, that's my way of doing the sitting, sitting and standing. Right. Um, I like and, that. Uh, and it's even lower tech than having the, the desk, but I, I think the yeah. key trend here or key, key message that's really surfacing is just being able to switch it up a lot switch and, uh, and going back and back and forth. Um, yeah. and, Go and for doing walks your... outside too. That's important because yeah. we haven't mentioned that, uh, and that does a lot of things. It does it does good to your body. It does good to your mind. Get some fresh air. Uh, if you have a garden, go in the garden. If you have a if you have a terrace, go on the, on the terrace. Or stick uh, your head just, out the window. I mean, I honestly yeah. do that sometimes. I just open up the. Uh, I have a bigger window here that I can actually kind of. It's a more like standing window, if you will. But even in, when I've worked in places where I didn't have that and it was a smaller window, I'll often just open the window and kind of stick my head out. And in fact, I did it today. It was it was kind of it's been really warm here, but it was snowing this morning. And I, it started snowing. I'm like, great. And I wasn't. It's snowing. Yeah, it's snowing. And which country are you living in? <laughs> yeah, the Czech Republic. Yeah, it was. It oh, was man. like a, It was like 23 degrees Celsius on uh, on on Sunday, which is well, like a 74 Fahrenheit or something like this. And then there was just a little bit of snow, but it, and it was sunny and snowing. And I'm like, perfect. Nice. It's this is time for a little break. And I just went outside and stood outside and just kind of breathed in the fresh air and and, and then the me. bird cropped on your head <laughs> totally yeah exactly that's why i had to cut my hair you know how to get it out of there yeah yeah so um no that, and and I, th I think it's this and we talk about it even from like a uh, being able to pay attention from a mental standpoint but i think even physically taking that routine um i haven't done as much as i probably should have but even doing some like more aggressive movements in in the break time one thing you you as we're talking about this, it, it, you reminded me also with um, with your eyes too, and being able to look, sort of focus on something further away. Obviously, looking into a screen is not good for your eyes. There's no secret about that. Uh, but I've positioned um, both my monitor here on my my laptop, and I have a bigger monitor uh, here on the side. Uh, both of them, I can look basically without moving my head. I can just look with my eyes out the of the window. And I and think that's, that's really, that's important. really that's good important. to be able to change the distance of what you're focusing on. Obviously, your monitor is maybe, you know, fairly close to you within arm's reach or so. And then if you're looking on the distance, you know, you could be looking out of your window on something uh, far away. Yeah, it's extremely important, uh, actually, for um, your eyesight and, and you, your overall health um, of your high, of your eyes to to change um, to change what you you know to change the distance of what you're looking at to change your your your, your focal it's uh, um, which is why it's recommended to actually um, work with a window uh, in front of you so when you're not on your computer like you mentioned you can look look out and look at the distance yep. there's nothing worse than uh, looking at a computer and there's a, a wall behind. Um, this is actually very unhealthy for your uh, for your eyesight, and I, it makes me think I'm going to recommend a book uh, in the show notes. That is, um, <laughs> I mean, it's hard to recommend it because it's it's half bullshit, uh, frankly speaking, in my opinion. But uh, one half is extremely extremely good uh, because it teaches you some uh, some eye uh, eye exercise that, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, really helped me with eye um, eye fatigue. Uh, eyesight fatigue and um, and uh, <laughs> I mean the book kind of claims that uh, you know if you if you're basically blind and you follow some of the guidelines you will recover your sight. Um, so there sounds is a like lot a bit of, of a stretch. There. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit of a stretch. But uh, the exercise that's being recommended, I think, work. And there's a lot of advice 
similar to what I mentioned about you know the keeping keeping some 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 distance window behind your, your stuff. So I'm I'm, I'm going to still put it in the show notes for people. Um, but uh, but of course I'm uh, I'm not a doctor, and what is in this book, you know about uh, like I said, uh, recover recover your eyesight. Um, uh, it's definitely uh, I personally don't uh, recommend you follow it or you believe that's true. But the exercises are great. Yeah, cool. We'll definitely add that there, and you can you can check that out. Um, how do you have your? You know, we're t- sort of talking about uh, monitors, looking at monitors and, and screens, and so you have a f- fairly unique setup. And for those of you just listening without video, um, maybe we can kind of describe how you have your setup. So right now you're using a camera that's on your laptop. Correct. And you normally don't have your laptop there. You normally have your uh, your iPad there, or how do you have that set up? Yes, I usually have. Um, well, I'm 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 using three screens, uh, which is my laptop screen. Um, then I have a I have a I have a desktop screen, and then I have an iPad that I use usually for calls. Um, and um, but but right now I'm using I'm using the laptop, which is. Just I, I use it here now because the background is better than just having a curtain that is on the other side. If I if I had to use my laptop uh, in its normal place, uh, but yes, I'm using I'm using usually uh, my laptop and and a desktop screen. I'm using two screens when I work and the iPad for conference call. Yep. And do you have your laptop uh, or your uh, your your bigger monitor? Are either of those on some sort of stand or on a stack of books, or how do you? Do yeah, you have the, those? the monitor the monitor is on a stand, so it's actually like at a proper you know level that you mentioned before, the two point five inches or whatever <laughs> crap. You know, I, I I wear the same stuff that you need um, to 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 perfect that, and and the laptop would be uh, below it. Because a laptop, um, uh, I would not really uh, use it. On my laptop, I actually uh, only have Slack um, that we use for communication uh, among the team members in our in our company. Um, but I'm actually working uh, mostly on, on the big monitor screen. Yeah, interesting. I think this is a, a topic that I'm also quite quite passionate about. So I have a, a bigger monitor, a 27 inch monitor, on top of a stationary. Um, Stand. I think you might even be using the, that one that I had ordered two of by accident, and then it's, exactly. Yeah, so we have the exactly same, one. same, same exact uh, uh, stand. So I have the same one, and then I have my laptop to the left of it on a laptop stand. And the reason I have the laptop stand is partly to use in this configuration that I'm describing, but also I travel with the laptop stand to be able to elevate the screen of my laptop while I'm traveling and then I have a wireless keyboard and mouse that I use both while I'm traveling uh, and also when I'm at my office. Um, if I go for a shorter trip, I wouldn't bring that other stuff. I just bring my laptop or if I don't anticipate having to do a lot of work, but if I'm going somewhere where I know I'm gonna be doing several hours of work at least per day, then I'll bring the extra stuff with me to be able to have a little bit healthier uh, posture. This one inch, 2.5 centimeters, uh, where your eyes, if you drew a line parallel to the ground, it would fall that distance, that one, one inch, 2.5 centimeters below the bottom of the monitor, I think is like the general recommendation that everybody yeah. seems to have online. I have found that not at all to work for me because what I've noticed is it totally depends on where in your monitor, on your monitor, you're really looking. And for me, I'm not looking at the top and it's in the monitor That's is not true. that far away from me. I'm often looking in the middle of it or on the on the bottom parts of it. So I actually have my monitor, I mean, I would say, yeah, my eyes, my eye line falls almost dead center in a 27 inch monitor. And that works well for me. Um, yeah, you have to find what works with you. I mean, you, you, I, I would say follow the recommendation first to set everything up and then adjust. You know, everybody's different. Um, I think what would be useful probably what we can do is uh, take picture of our, our, our setup and and, and uh, you know like maybe that. put uh, put it in a show notes download link or something like that just uh, to give a more visual idea um, of of uh, of how the and also how different our setups uh, setups are. Uh, I know I know a lot of people like to to geek out on that um, and have some uh, some 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 ideas, so we can definitely do that. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think we should we can do that. And we can even throw it in this video as we're talking. So um, I think this this is really really key. I mean, we've, this has been a recurring topic or recommendation that I think we've pretty much made on every episode of the show. 
around experimentation. I think your your recommendation, Eric, is a good one of start with what the common wisdom is that you can find. From my reading on this, it seems to be pretty consistent everywhere. And then experiment from there. But don't experiment, don't make too many changes at once and don't make changes too often because then it'll be very difficult yeah, to exactly. understand what's working and what's not. So I've made, I've been tweaking this stuff for you know a decade and a half and I feel pretty comfortable with where where I have things today, but even here, where often you'll the recommendation will be to have your your shoulder, shoulders, elbows at ninety degree angles, and your your forearms are effectively parallel to the ground when you're working. I've actually found it to be a little bit better for me to have them slightly elevated because I tend to hold my posture a little bit better. But I have to be careful to not put it too high because then I put too much strain on my shoulders to not overdo it. So there's a lot of these little tweaks yeah. that are. If you're, if you're listening to this and watching this, then you're probably working in front of a computer a lot. Then there's a, there's a lot. Of, it's worth putting in the effort to make these tweaks and these adjustments, yeah. and just do it with books or something boxes. I mean, I've even living in different countries, and I didn't want to invest a lot of money into different monitor arms and stands and all this kind of stuff. I would just use what I could find. I mean, you get some order delivered, and you have an extra sturdy box from it. Then just put your laptop on top of it, or maybe you're renting some Airbnb, and there's a little extra small side table that you don't have a use for. Just put it on top of the desk and use that. I mean, there's definitely been more than once where I've encountered that situation. And, and so you can even do that at home or in your office um, just to get that, figure out what works for you and then go out and, and buy the stuff. I think a lot of people will invest into these types of things thinking it's gonna solve their problem. And the recommendation that I make to family and friends even on this topic is you're not gonna buy your way out of this. I mean, you can no. you can do some sort of tweaks, but ultimately it's gonna come down to compensating for doing something to your body that it's not designed to do. And that compensation is in the form of exercises, stretches, and, and yeah. maybe posture specific ones, but even just going out and swimming, that's part of the reason why I swam. I felt that that even with not going too often, maybe two, three times a week for, for 30 minutes at a time, made a big difference in how I felt physically, of course, after, but how my posture felt. Um, Swimming as a is the best exercise, um, yeah. definitely. If, uh, if, if you have um, the opportunity of, of go, go for, for a swim, uh, like you said, at least three times a week, um, that's the best for your body. That's better than, than, uh, than running. Definitely running is actually not so good for your body. Um, so yeah, swimming is, is, is a bomb, especially if you, if you, if you have posture issue, if you have back pains, anything like that, swimming is the best. Yeah. Agree on that. It's something that's fairly new for me. I mean, most of my life, especially in my younger years, I'd spend doing relatively aggressive or assertive outdoor sports, individual ones like mountain biking, alpine skiing, rock climbing, a fair bit of hiking. I never really got into running. Uh, I always found that to be. It hurt my knees, actually. I think I just trashed my knees yeah, too much when I was younger from skiing. And even the gym stuff. I mean, I've tried the gym here and there. And, and like you were saying before, if uh, if it's not within five minutes walk of your home, then you're not going to be uh, going there, basically. I mean, for me, yep. it's like even if it's in, in the building, I'm not going to be going there because I just haven't built the mechanism to get myself to go to the to the gym. And part of it, I think, stems from this um, sort of independence mentality where I don't want to be dependent on a gym to be able to stay fit, where if I can uh, do my my exercises with a minimal amount of equipment or ideally no equipment in any environment, then it helps me, maybe it feeds my ego around resilience. Or I don't know what, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, one way um, that makes it easier to go to the gym uh, on top of it being close by is um, if you can afford it, uh, get a, a coach, uh, you know, any gym, you can get a personal coach that will help you. Um, and, uh, and this will definitely uh, motivate you to, to go there because he will know exactly the type of exercise you need to do. Um, take somebody with some uh, physical uh, therapy uh, background um, because he will uh, he will focus on on, on posture while, while you're doing and on the right movement and that's important so that you don't get injured. So I, I did that and it was great. So I cannot recommend it enough to get to get a coach uh, if you're going to a gym. Um, uh, because yeah, it, it makes a big difference to have a personal trainer. Um, if you even have more money, you can have a personal trainer coming at your place 
um, for a while. That's pretty uh, baller. At least to show you <laughs> to show you the basics. Yeah. Um, but also you can have a gym buddy. I mean, you know, uh, to keep you uh, motivated, I think there's nothing better than go with a friend to, to the gym and uh, challenge each other and just have fun. Um, you know, and, and talk and talk stuff while you while you're doing uh, your exercise. Um, if that's an option, you should also try it uh, as well. Uh, or go with your partner, your spouse, if you if you're into that, uh, both of you. Um, but yeah, going going to the gym alone, um, yeah, it's not for it's not for everybody. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, good tips though. I think, uh, especially around this, having a physical therapist. I had a a. a coach trainer in a gym that I had gone to for a fairly brief period of time while living in China. And besides the little bit of a, a cultural and language barrier, it was very clear that he was under the impression that I was trying to get buff and ripped. And I didn't care about that at all. I just wanted yeah, exactly. to maintain some, yeah. you, you, know, you have to tell, you have to tell the trainer and usually a good trainer will always ask you what's your goal. Yeah. You know, what's your goal? Is it um, is it better cardio? Is it to be buff? Uh, is it just physical maintenance? Um, uh, anything. And uh, so he will ask you what, you what your goals are and adjust. And also, like I said, if he's got a physical therapy background, um, and uh, that's even better because you need to know, especially if, you, if, you, if you're using weight, you can injure yourself uh easily and he will know he will teach you how to do the movement with a proper form because that's what matters to do the movement with a proper form um and and start with low weight uh, until you get to the proper form and then you can build up on that yeah very important yeah i think the the i'm a firm believer in the physical therapy option or sort of element in any of this stuff we've been talking about yeah the challenge like with any quote-unquote expert is finding one that actually knows knows their stuff in a way that's compatible with with your belief as well. This is something that I've often struggled yeah, with. And, and sorry, quick tip for looking for a personal trainer: um, pick one that looks exactly how you would want to look. So that's of a good course, tip. don't pick one that is like 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 the Hulk or like Arnold Schwarzenegger if you don't want to be like big, you know. Um, and and don't just look at this person and say like, oh, that's exactly the type of body or the type of posture or the type, you know, look for somebody that you want to look like. Um, um, or if your guy, look, look, look for a hot chick because that might, <laughs> you know, makes you want to go to the gym. Um, yeah, I was going to say that uh, maybe if you want Whatever works for yeah, you. Yeah, no, that's, I think it's finding these motivation things, right? I mean, going to yeah. the gym or even doing these exercises at home, it's not you know, feels good after the fact, but it's not a, it's not, it's not really that enjoyable during, during the exercise. At least it hasn't been for me, especially when I compare it to other things that I've done for sport over my lifetime. I mean, going and rock climbing or mountain biking on some, some sick trails is way more fun than, you know, yeah. getting the, the big rubber band and putting it around your, your, uh, your, your, <laughs> you know, your arms or whatever and stretching to the side. Like that's not, you know, a whole lot yeah. of fun and same with the gym. So yeah, get whatever no. whatever motivates you. Maybe even get a nice, uh, uh, attractive uh, male trainer if you're a woman, and that'll get you <laughs> motivated to go there. And um, yeah, whatever you know, sex sells. It's not the first or last time <laughs> we'll probably talk no. about that, but um, that's De definitely not. Um, it's yeah, it's about doing something that motivates you or that is fun. And I think um, I think uh, unless uh, unless you have uh, anything else to add to this, I think we can move to another part of it, which uh, I think is important also to mention. And we started to mention it when you were talking about mountain climbing, about how to make um, what 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 are the stuff you mentioned swimming, you mentioned mountain biking. I think what's important is to feel to do something that brings you joy. And I'm I'm, I'm going to give you a, an example. So. Um, I think a, a lot of people don't play enough, especially grown-ups. Uh, we don't we don't play enough, and I think it's it's great also to find activities that you you can you can you can play as a group. Uh, so, for instance, uh, at your work, you can have a, you find a bunch of co-workers, a bunch of friends, and just uh, play football at night. Play any kind of like um, sports, team sports, because that's uh, that's good physical activity. Uh, or if you're like me, you're confined at home with your kids, then you find uh, games that you can play at home with your kids. 
and um, and I, I I have two recommendations to make uh, of games to use with your kids to play at home. Uh, this is something I mentioned to you, Mike, before. Um, so if you guys uh, own uh, any kind of um, a video game device like a PlayStation uh, or a Switch, Nintendo Switch, uh, I strongly recommend, especially if you can find at home with your kids, to buy Just Dance. Which is uh, which is a, a dance video games uh, that you have to to do the movements that you see on the TV um, and based on some uh, you know top twenty songs of the year and it's a very fun fun way as a family because up to four people can play it and it recognizes the movement uh, that you're doing in front of the TV. It's a very fun way to get to get the whole family moving and dancing um, and uh, trust me if you do that for thirty minutes you will definitely break a sweat. Um, and uh, another one that I strongly recommend is Ring Fit Adventure, um, which is um, actually uh, 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 an adventure game. But uh, if you want your character to run, you have to run yourself. So you you run. I love uh, that. <laughs> Yeah, I know. So, uh, I mean, of course, you, you, you went standing up, you know, you just do the movement. Um, hey, but I even uh, do that with uh, the different exercises I've been experimenting with now exactly. for cardio. Does, I mean, I'm just, without the video game, just running like an idiot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the point, is that that can be quite boring. But if you're, if you're actually running and you see your character moving in the game, and then when you fight monster, you have to do some, uh, some exercise. Uh, to to kill them, um, so they, they, you have to do like push-ups. You have to do a lot of exercise. You're actually using a, a ring. Um, I don't know how you call that, but it's kind of like a ring, and you can put pressure on it. It's like what they use when you do uh, pilates. Um, anyway, it's uh, it's it's a great 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 game. You can also play uh, with your family, and um, and this gets your your heart pumping pretty fast as well um, if you do 30 minute session so so those two games just dance and wing fit adventure is a good way to um, this is actually video games that i recommend people to do you know like sitting in your couch and play um, uh, shooting shooting games for like hours i would definitely not recommend uh, people to do that but those type of of games that makes you stand up and move i'm all for that Definitely. Great That's stuff. great. And so how, how often do you find yourself doing this with the family now that uh, you're still under the quarantine in Barcelona? Um, I'd say a few times per week, like three times per week, either one or the other. I mean, sometimes the kids play every day um, and uh, and I should definitely make more effort to, to join them um, sometimes. Uh, but I have work to do and, 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 and then uh, other stuff. And I, I do get my exercise done in the morning anyway, but I feel that I feel even better if I add that on top That's of awesome. everything else. Um, yeah, Does your wife join this as well? So it's really the whole family? That... No, she's not into the, it's, she's not into this, uh, these video games at all. Sure. Um, but I, I, yeah, I, I just do that with uh, my two, my two children and we have a lot of fun. That's great. Well, it's a nice time to spend together and get some exercise, especially if you can't leave the house. For me, I, I mean, it's especially during this, uh, you know, confinement, time, I guess. Uh, it's really just indoor exercises on my own. Um, for While living in Praga, my main exercise that I was quote unquote refining, if you will, was actually walking. I would walk a lot, really quite a lot. And, uh, and part of it was that I wanted to get comfortable and build something into my routine that I could do for the rest of my life and that didn't require any equipment. And so that was uh, and I live in a city, so I and I didn't want to go to the gym, and I wasn't swimming at that time, so that's what I did. And I would often listen to podcasts or or um, audio books, well, not so much podcasts, but mostly audio books, and um, and take calls uh, while I would be walking. But then, as we've talked about, and I think in the the meditation episode around mindfulness, I, I sort of started doing less and less of the listening to things and walking around without headphones on and, and paying attention to my surroundings. But then I realized it also takes a long time. If you want to get a good walk in, you have to walk for an hour and a half, two hours. Whereas with swimming, if you're swimming quite intensely for 20 minutes, even uh, it can be a pretty decent way to move your body around. Like I said, for most of my life, it was these, you know, rock climbing, hiking, uh, these kind of activities I had never really been into the team sports uh, so much, and even in my childhood or adulthood, I think now, especially if I, as I spend more time outside of uh, an urban environment, uh, which I aspire to do, then 
I think it's this hiking and camping stuff that I really enjoy the most in a group setting. I mean, even, you know, taking a big backpack, you have to carry a lot of weight. You go out somewhere. Um, I really enjoy making a fire in the forest and cooking. Uh, as you've joked about before, I, I really do, do enjoy cooking and also cooking in, on a fire in the forest. So uh, that's kind of a fun activity. I mean, it kind of depends on what kind of food you end up bringing with you if you're uh, getting a net benefit or, or not. But, but uh, you know, these are kinds of sort of fun activities. But certainly for something like I've described, that's not something you can really build into your your uh, you know your weekly routine that you're going out into the forest three times a week to to build all this stuff. But for those of you living in a more rural area, which I've spent most of my life in, I'd go out and go for a, an hour hike you know, four or five times a week, even, um, uh, in my, in my early twenties all year round, even in the winter when it'd be really, really cold out. Um, and that was great. And I do it with a bunch of friends. So that that's something that, um, I think is, is something that can also apply to some of our listeners. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's obviously a difference between if you're living in the city or if you're living in the country. Um, and, um, I think people living in the city, um, should take the opportunity still to to do a, as much walking as they can uh you know hopefully they can find some parks some green green spaces where they can they can they can go and 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 walk um but i i, I think and, and that's true i mean i know people in the country sometimes are, are guilty of that but uh you know especially if you're working at home so you don't really commute um and uh and you sp- spending all of your time on your butt. Take every opportunity you can to walk. So don't take your car to go to the to the market to to buy grocery. Uh, if you can walk there, even if it takes you thirty minutes to go there. Um, if you go to 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 restaurants, um, try to pick restaurants that are not too close by and not too far. So you you get a, a nice walk, uh, especially an after walk lunch is always great. So if you pick a restaurant that is like 20, 25 minutes walk, that's perfect in my opinion because that gets you almost one hour of walking back and forth. Because if you go downstairs, you have a, a restaurant five minutes walk, then you don't get any, enough walking. And if it's too far, then you might want to take a, your car or a taxi or a bus or whatever, which is not good either. So think about ways that you can get more walking by um, by doing that. You know, uh, daily groceries also like, Try to try to walk there. Try to find a place where it's like twenty minutes walk to go there. Um, if your kids need to go to school, um, you know maybe maybe walk them there as well as much as possible, or take the bus, walk and bus instead of of, of car. Uh, then you don't you don't get stuck in traffic. And if you commute the same, uh, hopefully your work uh, place is not too far. Um, but if it's like 40 minutes walk, maybe it's better to still walk there than take your, 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 your car. I mean, it's obviously easier said than done, especially if it's cold outside or rainy. But um, I think any opportunity that you can get of, of moving your body and walking outside, I think you should take it, especially if that's pretty much the only physical exercise that you get during the day. Um, make, make an effort. You know, people are talking about 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 steps. I mean, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm guilty sometimes of looking at how many steps I've, I've done uh, because I'm, I'm curious. But, uh, but just, yeah, take every opportunity you can to, to walk around uh, outside. Yeah, I agree with that very much. And I am very fortunate in the fact that I live in Prague, which is an extremely walkable city. Uh, and so, so I, I do build that into my routine and even avoid using public transportation, which is fantastic here. Uh, to walk a bit more. I think this really applies to maybe some of the urban dwellers in, in the US and, and a lot of people, even non-urban dwellers in, in Europe. But for the more rural dwellers in the US, um, it's a bit difficult because y- your life effectively revolves on uh, using a car to get around because there is lack of public transportation. Everything's pretty far away. And for those people, I think it's just building in the routines like we've talked about on numerous occasions to go out into a park or to some wilderness area or some some place maybe even have to drive to there or ideally it's on the way from dropping your kids off at school or, or whatever else so you don't have to add more time in, in your car to get to any of these places but go go build this into your routine or even walk around your yard I mean even in the middle of the day when you go up to take a, a short break in between your work just go 
put on some, you know, a jacket if it's cold out and some outdoor shoes and just go walk around your yard a little bit or go walk around your neighborhood. I think there's a lot of opportunities that you just have to sniff them out effectively and figure out what works for you. But getting some fresh air, getting some movement in um, is really, really great. So I think we've covered pretty much uh, kind of the main things we want to talk about in terms of the physical aspect of, of uh, ergonomics yep. and working from home um, and, you know, keeping fit and healthy. Uh, the one we haven't really talked about, but we'll save, I think, for another show, an episode of another show is the um, nutrition and food food aspect of this. I mean, we've talked about Definitely. sleep and routines and all these kinds of things, but certainly nutrition uh, in terms of, you know, staying quote unquote fit aesthetically uh, is probably more important than any of the physical exercise, at least in my experience. Um, that's, we can say that for another time. Yeah, no, it's 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 part of it because you cannot talk about uh, staying fit and healthy working at home without talking about nutrition. Um, and um, and I think we, we we talked about mindfulness and 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 um, like everything you can do to quiet your mind uh, and and to have a healthier mind. Um, and, and and today we talked more about uh, physical uh, aspect of it and movement. I think movement is key here. No matter what you do, is movement. Um, but then the nutrition uh, plays a big big role. So if you have the holy trinity of of uh, you know uh, of of mind um, and uh, movement and and the diet or, or food or nutrition, I think I think you're good to go. So you but you need you need this, this, uh, those three to to make it work. If one if one is not working, then nothing else is working. Um, and uh, and of course uh, sleep as well. Which we also mentioned in the past is is important. So yeah, I'm looking forward to talk about uh, nutrition because I think we uh, we have uh, you and I tested a lot of uh, different uh, diets and 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 uh, and, and ways of uh, optimizing food intake and, and nutrients and all of that. So yes, there's a lot of things to discuss. Obviously, this is for true. Next episode. Yeah, and a and a topic I'm infinitely passionate about. So. Good stuff, Eric. Great to chat with you on this. Uh, good Likewise. to hear a bit more about your routines and the way you approach this. And looking forward to another another episode. Yes, same here. Thanks, guys, for listening. See you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.